Hello, I'm Scott Mercer. Welcome to the You Can Do the Rubik's Cube Solution Guide video that unlocks the secret to solving the world famous Rubik's Cube. My goal is to walk you through the You Can Do the Rubik's Cube Solution Guide six stage process so that there's no confusion about how the guide and the instructions work. By the end of this process, you will have a solved 3x3 three three Rubik's Cube. All you need now is your Rubik's Cube and your You Can Do the Rubik's Cube Solution Guide. If you don't have a guide, you can download one from the You Can Do the Rubik's Cube website at youcandothecube.com. Either way, you can still follow along because we're going directly from the solution guide. All it takes is a little time, effort, patience, and perseverance. So let's get started with stage one. Stage one is getting to know your Rubik's Cube and the definitions of the Rubik's Cube pieces. This stage is important because knowing the pieces is what helps you unlock the secret and understand how the cube works. Edge pieces are pieces with two colors. There are 12 edge pieces all located in the middle rows. Corner pieces are pieces with three colors. There are eight corner pieces located on the corners. Center pieces are pieces with one color. There are six center pieces, and each one is located in the center of each side. It's important to know that center pieces don't move. This is important for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that since the center pieces don't move, they represent the color of their side. White, yellow, orange, red, green, and blue. The center pieces also tell us whether another piece is in the right position. Because if it doesn't match the centerpiece color on that side, then it's in the wrong position. The second reason it's important to know centerpieces don't move is because centerpiece colors are always opposite each other. White is opposite yellow, orange is opposite red, and green is opposite blue. This is good to know because when you're looking for a centerpiece color, you'll know that if you see it's opposite, then the color you're looking for is on the other side. Now that you know the pieces of the cube, it's important to know how the cube actually moves. Each side or face of the cube is represented by a letter. This means that when you hold your Rubik's Cube in one position, full front, the following letters refer to the six sides of the cube. R equals right face, right side of the cube. L equals left face, left side of the cube. U equals up face, top side of the cube. D equals down face, the bottom side of the cube. F equals front face, front side of the cube, which is facing you. And B equals back face, back side of the cube, which is away from you. These letters are also used to represent the moves necessary to solve the Rubik's Cube. For example, the capital letter F represents the F front face, which is to be moved clockwise. The capital letter F with an I after it means an inverted or counterclockwise move when looking at that face directly. If you hold the cube with the right side facing you, you can see the rotation is in a counterclockwise direction. When making the moves as illustrated in the solution guide, hold your cube with the face full front like this, not at an angle like this. In the solution guide, the gray on the cubes in the move graphics means the colors on the cube don't matter. Your focus should be on the highlighted white parts of the cube with the arrows that indicate the direction the face should move. Now let's see how the cube moves. Each move represents a rotation that is a quarter turn, like this. If there are two of the same moves, then it is two quarter turns, which equal a half turn rotation like this. Remember, the letter I after a capital letter move means move that face in an inverted or counterclockwise direction. Now that you've completed stage one, it's time to put all this knowledge to work. But before we move to stage two, let's quickly highlight some of the important things from stage one. And here to help me teach you how to solve the cube are Taryn and Jason. How are you guys? Good. Yeah, good, good. First, you must remember the center pieces don't move. They tell us what color the side needs to be in order to solve the cube successfully. Second, the center piece colors are always opposite each other. White opposite yellow, blue opposite green, and red opposite orange. 
This helps us know where the pieces are located and where they need to go. Thanks, you guys. Great job. Now we'll see how this all comes together by applying in stage two what we learned in stage one. Our goal in this stage is to create a white cross. The white centerpiece usually has a logo on it, so find the white centerpiece and hold your cube with the white centerpiece on top. Much of this level is achieved with practice and with some trial and error, but we have some tips that definitely help. The first tip is to make certain to solve the white cross in the following order. Blue side, orange side, green side, and then red side. This prevents messing up what has already been solved. Now keep in mind, sometimes lefties have a hard time with this. Naturally, they want to go in a counterclockwise order. Blue, red, green, and orange. And that's fine too. The important thing is that no matter what direction you decide to solve the white cross, you need to stay with that order. Now notice in the gold cube that the edge piece colors match the top white center piece and the side red and blue center pieces. This is how we know the edge pieces are in the correct positions. How do we know this? Because the center pieces don't move. So if the edge piece matches the center piece on both sides, we know it's right. Exactly. So let's see how this works. Keeping the white center piece on the top U face, let's move the blue white edge piece to the bottom D face. Your blue white edge piece may already be on the bottom. With the blue white edge piece on the bottom, let's rotate the bottom D face until the blue white edge piece is directly under the blue center piece. Do you guys have it? Yeah. Yeah, no, good job. Let me see. Oh, that's awesome. Good job. And just so you know, the reason we move the edge piece to the bottom D face is because when a piece is on the bottom, we can move it while it's on the bottom to its correct side without disturbing the pieces above it. Now that we have what we need, which is the blue center piece and blue white edge piece together, we must hold the cube in our hands so that the blue center piece along with the blue white edge piece are on the right R face. What we're going to do next, as shown in the solution guide, is rotate the right R face by doing R, R, which moves the blue white edge piece to the top U face above the blue center piece. Now, why do we want to do this? So the blue white edge piece is in line with the white center piece and blue center piece. Let's check it out. If your cube looks like this, then you have the blue-white edge piece in the correct position because the blue on the blue-white edge piece matches the blue center piece and the white on the blue-white edge piece matches the white center piece. Congratulations. This means you can move to the next step of solving the white cross. Just remember to hold your cube so the orange center piece is on the right R face and start solving the orange-white edge piece the same way we just solved the blue-white edge piece. Now, if your cube looks like this cube, where the blue of the blue-white edge piece is lined up with the white center piece, and the white of the blue-white edge piece is lined up with the blue center piece, don't worry, because all you need to do is hold the cube with the blue center piece on the right R face. Now, do this sequence of moves from the solution guide. R I U F I UI. And there it is. Pretty cool, huh? That's why it was called the magic cube, because sometimes it's magical how it all comes together. Okay, so now we have to solve the other three colors. But remember, one of the tips for solving the white cross is to solve the sides in a certain order of blue, orange, green, red. This is so we don't mess up what we've already accomplished. Now, following the tip, we have to find the orange-white edge piece and move it to the bottom D face first, and then rotate the bottom D face until the orange-white piece is below the orange center piece. Now, I'm sure you remember the next steps, so go ahead and give it a try. Now, the kids and I are going to work on our cubes while you work on yours. And if you get stuck, remember to simply rewind and start over. This will make you better because you'll learn from your mistakes. Because the more times you do something, the better you become at it. So it's not really a mistake. It's just practice. All right. So you guys got it? Yeah. Oh, you do. Nice job. Ah, congratulations. And congratulations to you, too. If your cube has a white cross that looks like this, you can move to stage three. 
Now, if you don't have the white cross, make sure you go through your steps slowly and completely. Pay close attention. You'll start to see a pattern of how things are moving. Have patience and don't give up. You can do this. Now that you've solved the white cross, our goal is to solve the white corner pieces. So let's get to it. Remember, those are the pieces located on the corners and they have three colors. Holding your cube with the white cross on the top U face, we have to locate the corner pieces with white on them. The tip on this stage is that the corner pieces will have one white color plus two other colors. This makes sense because since we're trying to solve the white side of the cube, the corner piece has to have white on it. The other tip is to first look at the corner pieces on the bottom D face of the cube to find one that has white on it. If there is already a corner piece with white on the bottom D face, then simply rotate the bottom D face until that corner piece is directly below its intended top U face corner position. How do we know if it's in the correct intended position? We know it's correct if the two other colors on the corner piece are the same color of the center pieces on both sides of that corner piece. Exactly. The position of our corner pieces can end up in one of four ways as shown by the illustrations in the solution guide. As long as it has the three colors we need, how it's situated doesn't matter because it will work itself out with the following moves. All you have to do is the move sequence R-I, D-I, R, D. Keeping in mind, you may have to do this sequence one, two, or three times, or until the corner piece is in the correct top U-face position. And there it is. Now we have to take the same approach for all four corners. Repeat this process until each corner piece is in the correct position on the top U-face. Now, if there is a corner piece on the top U-face in the wrong corner position, then move it to the bottom D-face. Make sure you're holding your cube with that top center corner piece on the right side facing you before you do the sequence. R-I, D-I, R. Once on the bottom D face, rotate the bottom D face until that corner piece is directly below its intended top U face position. Once it's there, we do the sequence R-I, D-I, R, D, until it is in the correct position on the top U-face location. This part is a good exercise because you really begin to see how the cube works and the patterns of the moves. I like it when it happens on the first sequence. That's when it's even more fun. <laughs> That's true, especially if you're in a race with your friends. <laughs> Okay, did you guys do it? Yeah. Right, nice job. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. And congratulations to you also. If your white layer looks like this, you can move to stage four. If you don't have the white layer, make sure you go through your steps slowly and completely, paying close attention. You want to make sure you understood everything and you held your cube correctly. Another common mistake is turning one of the faces in the wrong direction. So pay close attention to those arrows. Have patience, don't give up, because you can do the cube. Now that you've solved the white layer, our goal is to solve the middle layer. Here we focus on the edge pieces. Remember, those are the pieces located in the middle, and they have two colors. So that we don't mess up our completed white layer, we need to hold our cube with the completed white layer on the bottom. So turn the cube over so that the white layer is on the bottom. This is actually a fun part because when we're finished with this stage, we're two thirds of the way done. So let's get started. One of the tips in the solution guide says that if you look on the side of your cube, you'll notice the vertical row of a color that looks like an upside down T as illustrated in the solution guide. Now remember, don't worry about the gray colored cubes in the solution guide because the gray tells you they don't matter on your cube. The vertical row is critical because it's how we get the edge pieces in their correct position to solve the middle layer of the cube. The way to create a vertical row is by rotating the top U-face until the front color of the edge piece on the top U-face without yellow on it matches a side center piece. The color on that edge piece's top U-face helps determine the direction the edge piece needs to move in to its correct position. 
So let's give it a try. But remember, do not rotate the cube in your hand. You're only moving the faces of the cube. This is important so you don't mess up. If you notice, this edge piece's top U-face color has to move to the right because it matches the centerpiece color on the right side. Now, according to the solution guide, if you're moving the edge piece in the same direction indicated by the arrow in the picture, which is pointing to the right, then we need to follow the sequential moves of U, R, U, I, R, I, U, I, F, I, U, F. And there it is. The edge piece is now in the middle layer and matches the center pieces on each side. So we know it's correct. We did it. Now, if you have an edge piece that's already in the middle layer, but in the wrong position, then do either one of the sequence of moves from the solution guide based on where that edge piece is located. This will move that edge piece to the top U-face layer. For example, to move the edge piece out of the left side, we do the move sequence UI, LI, U, L, U, F, UI, FI. Now, we simply rotate the top U face until that edge piece creates the vertical line and then determine if the edge piece needs to move to the left or right position. If you're moving the edge piece to the left as indicated by the arrow, then do the correct sequence of moves from the solution guide. UI, LI, U, L, U, F, UI, FI. And there it is. So how did that work out for you, Jason? I got it. It works. It worked for me, too. It's pretty cool. Great job. Congratulations, you guys. And congratulations to you also. If your bottom two layers look like this, you can move to stage five. We only have one more layer to go. And if you don't have the two layers, that's okay. Just make sure you go through your steps slowly and completely. If you messed up the entire cube, then don't worry and don't get frustrated. Just go back to stage one, two, or three and start the process from there. Like we said in the beginning, if you make a mistake, you'll learn from it and then be able to move on. Whether it's misunderstanding something, you're not holding your cube right, or turning one of the faces in the wrong direction, you'll learn from it, and that's a good thing. Now that the first two layers are solved, our goal is to solve the top layer, which is done in two steps. The first step is where we focus on making a yellow cross. In this step, one of the tips is that the yellow edge pieces on the top U-face do not need to match the side center pieces. Not yet, anyway. So don't worry about them. Our first goal is to match the yellow pattern on the top U-face of the cube to one of the yellow patterns shown on the cubes in the solution guide illustration. If you have the yellow cross pattern, then you get to skip this step, and you can move on to the second step of stage five. If you don't have the yellow cross, then you have to match your cube to one of the other states. Keep in mind that the gray cubes in the illustrations mean those cubes don't matter. As long as you have yellow cubes on the top U face that you can match to one of the four states, then you're ready to do a sequence of moves. So let's give it a try. If the cube matches state two, then you have to do two sequences of moves. First, you need to do the state 2 sequence as shown in the solution guide, which is F, U, R, U, I, R, I, F, I. When you finish this sequence, your cube's yellow pattern on the top U face should match state 3 or state 4. If it's state 3, then you do the solution guide state 3, F, U, R, U, I, R, I, F, I. If it's state four, then you do F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. 
Either way, make sure you're holding your cube so the top U face matches one of the state's yellow patterns. This is how you know how to hold your cube while you're doing the sequence of moves. Remember, you're not rotating the cube, you're rotating the faces of the cube. When you're finished with this step, you should have a yellow cross on the top U face of the cube. If you have it, then it's time to do the second step of getting all the yellow on top. And we're getting closer to solving the cube, you guys, so let's keep it going. Now that the yellow cross is completed, our goal is to solve the top layer by getting all the yellow on top. In order to do that, we have to make all the corners yellow. So let's see what patterns you have on the top of your cubes. I have state two, which is one yellow corner with my yellow cross. I have state three with two yellow corner cubes with my yellow cross. And that's perfect then because we get to solve all three. So let's look at the top U face of the cube and match the top U face to one of the states shown in the solution guide. Pay careful attention to the details in each state. In state one, if no corner cubes are yellow on the top U face, then you must position your cube in your hand so that you have a yellow left corner on the left face to match state one in the solution guide illustration. In state two, if one corner cube is yellow on the top U face, then you must position your cube in your hand so that you have the one yellow corner cube on the bottom left corner of the top U face to match state two in the solution guide illustration. In state three, if two corner cubes are yellow on the top U face, it doesn't matter which two corners are yellow. You must position your cube in your hand so that you have a yellow left corner on the front F face to match state three in the solution guide illustration. Once you've matched the cube to one of these three states, you can do the sequence in the solution guide to begin solving the yellow corners and making the entire top U face yellow. But before we do the sequence, it's very important to remember that you may have to do this sequence one, two, or three times to achieve a complete yellow top U face. And after each sequence of moves, you have to reorient the cube in your hand to rematch the top U face to the appropriate state and repeat the sequence until all corners are solved. Okay, let's give it a shot. Hold your cube with the top U face matching the correct state and the top U face on the top of your cube. A common mistake is holding the cube with the yellow cross on the front F face. So make sure it's on the top U face. We start with R, U, R, I, U, R, U, U, R, I. Now, if you have all the yellow on top, you can move on to stage six. And for those of us who didn't get as lucky, we have to rematch the top U face with one of the three states again. And then do the same sequence. R, U, R, I, U, R, U, U, R, I. Now, if you don't get all the yellow on top again, don't worry. You should only have to do the sequence one more time. First, rematch the top U face with one of the three states again. And do the sequence one more time. R, U, R, I, U, R, U, U, R, I. Ah, there we go. The cube looks just like the picture in the solution guide. Remember, in the solution guide illustrations, the gray cubes on the side mean it doesn't matter what color they are, at least not yet. If your cube matches it, then great job. We're almost there, so we can move on to stage six. If your cube doesn't look like the illustration, then you need to see where you messed up and try to correct it. You might need to start over by going back to stage two, the white cross. Either way, don't give up. You can do this. We'll meet you at the next stage, stage six. Okay, here we are at stage six, and now that the top U face is yellow, it's time to position the yellow corners correctly. First things first, we need to take a look at the corners of the cube on the top layer 
and twist the top U-face until at least two corners are in the right location. The corners are indicated by A, B, C, D on page 8 of the solution guide. If you have four corners in the correct position, you get to move on, or in this case, fast forward to the second step of stage 6. If you only have two corners, keep in mind the corners can be on the same side or diagonal. But there have to be two corners in the correct position. How about you guys? Do you have the correct corners? I have two corners in the correct position. Very good. I also have two corners, but they're diagonal. That's okay. How do you know if they're in the correct position, though? Because the three colors on the corner pieces match the center pieces on each side. Well, there you go. Good job, you guys. Now that we've identified the corners in the correct position, the first step is to hold the cube in the correct position. If you have the correct corners on the same side, then hold the cube so the two correct corners are on the back B face in the A, B corner positions. Now, to switch corners C and D into their correct corner positions, we follow the move sequence R, I, F, R, I, B, B, R, F, I, R, I, B, B, R, R, U, I. If you need to switch the diagonal corners, then do the same move sequence R, I, F, R, I, B, B, R, F, I, R, I, B, B, R, R, U, I. Do this once, then hold the cube so the two correct corners are on the back B face. And do the sequence again, R, I, F, R, I, B, B, R, F, I, R, I, B, B, R, R, U, I. Now, all four corners should be in the correct positions. Congratulations, you've done it. Now, we have one more step to go. But before we take our next step, if your cube doesn't look like this, simply go back to the beginning and go through the stages again. One of the more common mistakes is moving the cube around in your hand when making the moves. So remember, you're rotating the faces, not the cube. Go ahead, start over. You'll be amazed at what you'll learn along the way. We'll meet you on the second step of stage six. We're so close now that we really want to pay attention so we don't have to start over. Now that the yellow cross is completed and the yellow corners are in the correct position, the second step of stage six is to solve the yellow edge pieces. Your cube could have one of two situations. Either you have one edge piece in the correct position and three edge pieces that are incorrect, or you have all four edge pieces in the wrong position. And what situation do you guys have? I have one edge piece that's correct. I have all four edge pieces that are incorrect. Okay, that's good. And I have one edge piece that's correct. So let's solve both situations. First, let's solve the one with all four edge pieces that are incorrect, because we need to have one edge piece in the correct position eventually. So to do this, we need to follow either one of the sequential moves in the solution guide. Since it doesn't matter which sequence we use when there are four incorrect edge pieces, we'll do the first one in the solution guide, which is the one that moves the edge pieces in a clockwise position. If you're looking at the cube from the top U face, it's F, F, U, L, R, I, F, F, L, I, R, U, F, F. Now we have one edge piece in the correct position. If one edge piece is correct and three edge pieces are incorrect, then we need to hold the cube so the face with the correct edge piece is on the back B face. Once we do this, we have to determine in what direction the other three edge pieces need to move. One way to do this is by looking at the edge piece on the front F face and see if it needs to move to the left or to the right face. If the edge piece needs to move to the left L face, 
then it needs to move in a clockwise direction or the first sequence in the solution guide. If it needs to move to the right R face, then it's a counterclockwise direction or the second sequence in the solution guide. So let's do our final move to solve the Rubik's Cube. To cycle the edge pieces E, F, G in a clockwise direction, then do F, F, U, L, R, I, F, F, L, I, R, U, F, F. To cycle the edge pieces E, F, G in a counterclockwise direction, do F, F, U, I, L, R, I, F, F, L, I, R, U, I, F, F. Congratulations, if you have a solved Rubik's Cube, you have unlocked the secret. Go ahead, jump around, celebrate, high five you guys, great job. Let me see, ah, oh, looking good baby. Now, let's do it again. If you can solve the Rubik's Cube, do it again, because there's nothing like solving it without the solution guide, except showing others how to solve it. Now, how did you feel when you solved it? I felt extremely proud and happy. I couldn't believe I did it. That's awesome, what about you? It was you? the best feeling in the world. People, people never believe me when I say I can solve it. So I practice until I can do it without the guide. And now that you've solved the Rubik's Cube, try the multicolored cross or the square in the middle patterns in your solution guide. You can extend this experience by checking out the You Can Do the Rubik's Cube website at youcandothecube.com where you can download solution guides to teach your friends, join the community, collect points, earn rewards, and share the experience with your friends and family. And remember, you, you can, can do, do the Rubik's, Rubik's Cube! Cube.